This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. In this lecture, we're going to work through chapter nine of the free lecture notes for Sina paper B2, which is on non-financial performance measurement. Now, in the previous lecture, we looked at financial performance. And of course, that's desperately important. Any business wants to improve its profitability. Uh, but it's also very important we look at non-financial measures. Um, what I'm getting at is, for instance, now I'm going to be very extreme here, but it's very easy to go about increasing profit in the short term. You know, we make desks, fine. I might move in as new uh, managing director and say, right, from now on, we use worse quality wood it'll cost less. Fine, costs go down, we make more profit. Um, or I say, right, we'll pay the workers less. Costs go down, more profit. And it will create more profit, except, of course, by using worse wood, the danger is we end up with a, a, a poor quality product. Uh, the workers, if they paid less, they end up leaving and we have trouble recruiting. It may not impact us immediately. So in the very short term, uh, I cut costs and make more profit, but it will definitely impact us in the future if we start losing staff and can't recruit, production will fall, and so on. Um, uh, if the quality of the desks we produce is poor, ultimately people stop buying. Now, I'm being very extreme there, but there is that danger that financial measures or by definition, almost, um, are looking at the short term, how good was this year compared with last year? Whereas, really, we should be looking very much to the future, whether this year's profit was up or down, we're really concerned with doing better in the future. And to do better in the future, we need to make sure we're at least maintaining quality. If quality falls, I don't care, whether the impact's immediate or long term, but ultimately profit fall, productivity falls, sorry, if quality falls, profits will fall. We need to make sure our staff are kept happy, because if the staff are unhappy and start leaving, in the long term we'll suffer. And so in addition to looking at measures from the accounts, looking at profitability, etc., the financial performance, if we want to do better in the future, we need to look at non-financial measures like quality, staff happiness, that sort of thing. But before we say slightly more, it's very important when we look at things like quality, staff happiness, staff satisfaction, that it's something we can measure. You know, it's no good coming in and saying, oh, I think the quality is better this year than last year. And, you know, you say, I think it's worse. Or I think staff are happier, you think they're not happy. We need to decide how we're actually going to measure quality. How we're going to measure staff satisfaction. We need to be able to put a number to it. So that if we've agreed on how it's going to be measured, we can come in, measure it and say, ah, this year it's this, last year it was that. It's got better, it's got worse. And so that's what we're talking about. And uh, <clears throat> as always, to go through all the, the first page is silly. It's just saying what I've just said. But look at the bottom. It says, for example, customer satisfaction, which is something that's important to us if we're going to do well in the future. There are two examples of how we could decide to measure it. Number of complaints per week, it's something we can put a number to, you know, and we can compare. Percentage of goods returned within 14 days or so. Again, we need something we can actually put a number to. If the percent goes up, it would appear customers aren't happy. If it goes down, perhaps they are. Now, there are no rules as to what measures we use, none whatsoever. But it's just being aware, being able to suggest, uh, being aware of the importance of uh, non-financial performance. 
and being able to suggest ways we could go about putting a measure on it. Uh, be careful of one thing. An example again, think of a hotel. A hotel, clearly, they want customers to be happy and satisfied, and so they can look at things like um, oh, what percentage of customers return a second time? You know, obviously, if they return, they, they're presumably happy. But a lot of people would suggest, oh, have a customer survey. You know, um, uh, these days, most hotels you stay and have a little card asking you to grade, you know, from one to five. Um, were you happy? Were you satisfied about the food or about the bed and so on? Well, be careful. That in itself isn't a performance measure. Doing a survey of customers is a way of getting the information. But the actual measure would be the average grade that customers gave you. Uh, over the page, paragraph 2.1, advantages of non-financial uh, performance indicators. Um, as I've said, the main one, the one I really want to stress is they're the best indicator of future performance. If we don't maintain quality, we will suffer in the future, however well or badly we've done in the past. Um, it can be tied into long-term objectives. And, well, repeating what I said in the first one, uh, if we improve non-financial performance, that's likely to lead to greater sales, greater profitability. Uh, the drawbacks, it's not there's really a problem here, but the things that hold us back a, a bit. Uh, time and cost, you know, depending on what measures we use, somebody's got to do the recording and the collecting of data. So there's likely to be a cost attached. We have to balance off. There's a limit to what it's worth paying. We, only, well, we ought to make sure we're getting more benefit than it's actually costing us. Um, difficulty of obtaining uh, information. Um, I'm not so sure about the third one. He said no agreed formula. There aren't. There are no rules about what measures to use. It's up to the company to sit and discuss and decide what is it that's important to us and to our customers and what would be a useful, a sensible way of measuring it. Um, there may be a lack of cause, you, causal link. You know, I've said that if we improve quality, that should result in higher sales. But there's not always a, a direct linkage. There are other factors that are outside our control. Anyway, look at ex exercise one. Suggest some non-financial performance measurements that would be suitable for a large supermarket chain to assess their performance. Uh, a to measure environmental performance. In that, um, the environment's like to be important to a, a supermarket, uh, if for no other reason than um, customers prefer uh, if they think we're being good to the environment. Again, there's no standard measures, but the sort of thing you might look at is oh, um, the food that's wasted per week. Of course, we're interested in that for other reasons. Um, purely from a financial point of view, we don't want to waste food, but also environmentally, uh, creating more waste, that's not good. Um, and the usage of plastic bags. Well, again, both of those need measuring what percentage of food is wasted, what percent of plastic bags are being recycled. Well, they're just examples of uh, the sort of measures they might look at. Uh, customer service. What matters to a customer in a supermarket? Um, could be things like the average time spent queuing. Customers expect to have to queue for a bit. But, you know, if they have to queue too long, uh, they might start looking for another um, supermarket. 
Um, so that's something we could measure, perhaps, and compare week by week, month by month, or year by year. Uh, or oh, what about? Oh, it ties in with my what I said about hotels and service uh, surveys. Uh, I've started to see in a lot of places these days, as you're leaving, um, the thing on a stand with buttons on, with smiley faces, you know, there are four buttons, one's with a sad face, another one's with a happy face, and the two in between, which I'm not going to waste time drawing, but wanting you to press a button according to whether um, you were happy or unhappy with the service you've had. Um, I don't know how many people actually use that, I always walk past and just bang. But that's um, a way of collecting data, and presumably those machines are storing. They can check out what percent of customers had a happy face and what percent had a sad face. And then you've got your measure, the percentage of happy faces, which I think I'm going to try and write that down, but I think you've got the idea. Uh, C, to measure employee satisfaction. You know, I don't know. So to market decide how important this is to them. But they, most businesses obviously want to keep employees happy. If they're happy, they serve the customer better. And so the sort of thing you might look at, I keep saying there are no rules here, uh, but staff turnover. What percentage of staff uh, leave and have to be replaced every month or every year? Because the greater the percentage of people who are leaving would suggest, perhaps, uh, if the percentage is greater, the staff are less happy. So that's it. They're all the suggestions. It's not a question of learning. What matters is this idea of we do need to keep customers happy. We do generally want to keep staff happy and so on. And looking for ways in which we might be able to measure, put a measure on it and end up with a number that we can then compare. It's better, it's worse. Uh, now, over there on the page, the last page, a lot of people have written sort of university-style papers on um, performance measurement. Uh, and um, the one we need is something called Kaplan and Norton's Balanced Scorecard, which was, I don't know why the word invented, it was um, suggested by Mr. Kaplan and Mr. Norton. And um, what they did, to balance scorecard sounds as though we're going to have all sorts of numbers, and that's not the case. They said there are four main areas of the business that we need to be looking at, that we need to be measuring. And they're what we call the perspectives. We need to be concerned about the customer. And what we mean by that, what do existing and potential customers value from us? So that's one thing we need to be looking at. We need to look at the internal business perspective. What must we excel at to achieve our customer financial objectives? So that's looking at how we, uh, our, our internal procedures, processes. Learning and growth perspective. We need to always be improving and looking for ways of growing the company, looking for new business. And of course, financial perspective, uh, to keep the shareholders happy. Now, as to what things we might look at under each of those four headings, very much depends on the type of business. But we want to decide, any business wants to decide, what's the most important thing, or the most important things do we think that customers need, uh, and so on, and design measures um, that would indicate to us whether we are improving or not. And so, the customer perspective examples of things you might look at, percent of sales from new customers. If that's increasing, perhaps we're doing something right. Uh, On-time deliveries, again, I, I've said so many times, it depends so much on the type of business, but uh, it's quite likely to be a major part of the customers who do deliver on time. Oh. If it is important to our customers, that's something we should measure and see what percent of the time are we actually on time. Um, 
Order some inquiries. Get all these inquiries. What percentage of them actually turn into orders? Have an analysis, uh, a survey of customers. Remember, it's the results from the survey that's the measure. But are they happy? Are they not happy? Uh, an obvious one to that one is quality. What percent of returns are coming from customers? What percent of complaints are there? A whole range of possible measures. The ones we choose and depend on. Very much our, our type of business. Internal business perspective. Last time I mentioned the bottom one first, but efficiency. You know, we want to produce efficiently as fast as possible. Measure how long it's taking to produce. Are we efficient or aren't we? Um, a unique cost analysis, the process time, value analysis. You know, are there any, I think we mentioned this elsewhere in the lectures, but are there any um, costs involved which we can strip out without reducing the value of the product to the customer? A learning and growth, the standard one there is um, number of new products introduced. We should always be looking for new products. They may not all succeed, but think back to product life cycle. Whatever we produce at the moment, however successful it is, there's likely to come a time when people don't want it because something new has come on the market. So it should, it should be us that's always looking for new products. As I say, we may not be always successful, but if we don't look, we never will um, grow. And of course, we want to, um, any new products, we want to get to market as fast as we can. Now, finally, clearly, financial does matter despite everything I've said. So you will look at financial measures. We said enough in the last chapter, so I'm not going to repeat that. We will look at financial measures, but it's the this idea that we need to look at other non-financial measures as well if we're going to grow in the future.